morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm not going to give you a speech. I'm just going to share some information on what we've been doing with, with the connected aircraft. And uh, I do hope to have an interactive session. I, I look at this as an opportunity to learn as much from all of you as to share information. You know, I, I think I'd be making the most obvious statement if I was to say that connected devices, smartphones particularly and tablets, have changed the way we do business. Not just on the ground, but they do actually open up an opportunity inside the, in, you know, when you're traveling as well. So gone are the days where you had to switch off your mobile phone and keep it switched off till you touch down or land it. The connected aircraft offers you the opportunity to continue doing what you were doing and anything that you could do on the ground, with of course some limitation which I would share, uh, you know, when you were in there. So certainly, this is something that is changing air, tra air travel. It's evolutionary, it's still too mature completely, it's not as good as it's on the ground and I would share the challenges with you. But without a shadow of doubt, there is a huge opportunity that is staring us in the face. You would remember this. It's just a while ago that you had to struggle or play with just video games. But that day has changed. You'll also remember, you know, when I was studying, when I was in school, this is what my principal's office had, a typewriter. And today, that's what's used for education, tablets. So why would you not use that in air? So what kind of opportunities are we talking about in terms of a connected aircraft? Definitely enhanced customer experience. CRM is a real opportunity. We do have a customer who wants to stay connected, whether it's their business email, whether it's social tweeting, it doesn't matter. They want to stay connected. They want to continue to do what they were doing on the ground. And they don't want any disruption in that. There is certainly a competitive edge opportunity, even if it's a matter of time. I think the two aspects that have been ignored so far, because the focus has so much been on passenger connectivity, is really the opportunity around operational efficiency. And, and the entire area of MRO, which I will touch on. So, so what do we see? Basically, what I'm saying here is I think there are four pillars of opportunities. One is the entire passenger space, connecting the passenger, giving them what they want, whether it's their business email, Facebook, you know, whatever else they wish to do, as well as infotainment, so content which is personalized. The second pillar as I see is really the cabin crew. A lot of us, and our airline is one which has a tablet, but currently those tablets work with the last thing happening on the ground, which means they get data on the ground, and that's where it stops. When they're in the air, the tablets they use, in our case, those are iPads, are actually put in flight safe mode. But why would we not use the opportunity of a connected aircraft to give them information about possible disruptions, changes, which may impact a passenger, and offer more personalized service. So, this, so CRM, in its true sense, is an enhanced opportunity if you could send real-time information. Even something like a misplaced baggage or a lost baggage, you'd much rather prepare your passenger and tell them when they're traveling that look, you're sorry, your baggage has not been loaded, we will actually reach it to you. The fact that you could connect that tablet to two systems on the ground offered you that opportunity which was never available. So what do we see here? So we introduced iPads for our pilots about three years ago. You know, we give them weather data, we give them briefing packs, we give them destination information, we give them runway charts, we give them takeoff weight calculations. We did all of that, but again, those iPads were basically the last thing happened on the ground. 
We gave them forms so they could do their journey logs. However, one of the things we've not been able to do, or we had not been able to do because we just didn't have the means, was the connectivity to the aircraft and giving them real-time situational information. Changes in the weather, congestion at a destination airport, which can actually burn or save fuel, depending on what you want to do, turbulence, and hence a, a renewed flight path, all of those are fantastic opportunities. And if you, you know, those of you who know the airline economics, know 37% to 40% of our cost is actually fuel. And even an incremental difference that we can make in, in savings, in reducing that fuel cost, makes a huge difference to the bottom line, particularly in an industry where it's impossible to make money. But I'm sure you've all heard that saying, if you're a billionaire, and you want to become a millionaire, please invest in an airline. Of course, IFE is another potential game changer. If you, if you, you, know, if you look at the economics of an IFE for an airline, the weight and the maintenance cost and hence the fuel burn is so enormous that a lighter, and I see, I see someone smiling out there, because he's probably going to talk about that, uh, you know, in his, in his presentation. But I generally, we all as an airline, generally see an opportunity here. Can we offer personalized content and yet save money for the airline? If you walk inside an airline <coughs> maintenance warehouse, the number of spares that you will see that go on to maintaining an IFE that you enjoy a movie on is enormous and it's a huge expense. So far, that opportunity has not been there. But imagine if we had broadband connectivity and we could do video streaming inside the aircraft with Wi-Fi. Why would you not actually explore that? Why would you not watch a movie like you watch at home today? Why would you not watch or connect to Netflix? It's, it's passenger service as well as a huge cost-saving opportunity for the airline. So I actually think all of these are enormous opportunities waiting to be exploited. I would actually dwell on the medical one for a moment and, and you know as an airline professional, uh, you know I can relate to this. I'm sure that those who work for airlines know that there would always be that one or two occasions when your aircraft would have to be diverted because of a medical emergency on board. We as an airline use a service called Medilink. But currently, if something goes wrong with a passenger when we when we're flying, we contact a doctor on the ground and only do talking on the radio. Is it fictional to imagine a world where a doctor could examine a patient actually as if he was examining the patient, you know, in his clinic? No, it's not fictional. I think this is within reach and it's a matter of time. And one diversion saved for an airline is again an enormous saving. More importantly, it's potentially a human life saved, which is invaluable. You know, I just want to share this one example uh, of a connected aircraft with you. So, post the very unfortunate MH370 incident, Brian, I promise you I won't steal your thunder. Uh, of course, a very, very unfortunate MH370 incident. Of course, like other airlines, we started looking at how do we track our aircraft and how do we track them at a frequency that is important. Some of you would know that there has been talk of regulation post that incident where airlines would be mandated by regulation to track their aircraft position at least once in 15 minutes. In fact, DTCA in India has already made it mandatory. Whether they have the capability to do that or not, or whether the airlines there have the capability to do that or not, the regulation is already in place. Anticipating that regulation, we at Qatar Airways actually built our own flight tracking system. Currently, this works with ADSB as well as ACARS connectivity, which gives us a reasonable amount of coverage, and we just added a MARSA. However, it's not foolproof. 
because some of those systems can malfunction, the onboard systems can malfunction, there are areas where the ADSP coverage is not there. But nevertheless, the connected aircraft does give us the opportunity to do this. And there are, you know, we do know there are devices coming through which when attached to the aircraft would, would give you that supplemental information that would cover the gaps that we face today. So this is just a view, and that's not mine, I picked up the slide from somewhere, just sharing with you, you know, what do passengers use, what are they using, and, and I think it's no surprise, it, it's really about, they still use some, they still use their laptops and tablets, but their smartphones as well, and you would see an increasing tendency to use smartphones connected to aircraft Wi-Fi, surfing, sending emails, tweeting, I think we have some of the providers in the room. I just met the gentleman from Google, but they are, these are the providers that currently provide aircraft connectivity with varying degrees of success, if I may say so. So we use a combination of, you know, basically Swift broadband with on-air and KU band satellite. So, you know, I'll give you just a little more, just in terms of bandwidth availability, it goes from Swift broadband, which is about 430 kbps per channel, and if you do dual channels, you get roughly about 1 mbps, sufficient for Wi-Fi, sufficient for internet browsing. Going on to KU, which can take you up to 12. Going on to KA, which is the next one in the in the line, and I don't think I have a slide on that. Uh, and the KA would actually give you about. 40 to 50 Gbps. And then of course, Google is talking about 2KU, which will give you 70 to 100 Mbps, if I'm not mistaken. And that is an enormous opportunity. It could, it, that's, that's likely to get you as close to the browsing experience that you have at home, as close to streaming and watching a movie on YouTube as you do at home. I don't want to dwell on this, but this is the basic infrastructure that's there inside the aircraft. The passenger connects to a hotspot, which talks to an onboard server, and then connected to a server on the ground, which then helps you surf the net, or send an email, or do whatever else you wish to do. And that's a very, very basic, simple diagram. I think these are the, you know, the of course, the KU have their own satellite. So basically, Inmarsa and Iridium are the satellite providers. I won't go into a lot of detail here. What I want to share with you are some of the challenges. So, just for your information, these are the airlines currently active in the connectivity space. Of course, we're there Lufthansa, Emirates, a lot of carriers have invested in connectivity technology, and of course, I haven't listed all of them. I know there are loads, loads of them in North America as well who have gone with the air to ground system that Google offers. It's just in terms of customer expectation, you know, so as a customer, I have internet in my coffee shop. I have Wi-Fi connectivity wherever I go, even at the airport. So why would I not have it inside the aircraft? And the answer is you will. You know, we as airlines do wish to provide this. We are providing it because we want to be able to leverage it for other benefits as well. Now, this is important, lest someone thinks this is a trouble-free world. And I want you to just look at this slide for 30 seconds because trust me, you will have these moments when you put these onboard connectivity systems. So bandwidth is an unconstrained. The systems aren't perfect. There are challenges. There are teething problems when you put them. There are throughput constraints. Depending on how many users get on and what they're doing and their usage profile. I mean, if I give you an example of a KU band satellite, depending on the number of aircraft that are in a specific airspace utilizing the KU band, performance varies. And these are real challenges when you look at a connected aircraft. 
Last but not the least, there is this cost challenge for an airline. How do you make money from something like this? Or do you? Would customer retention be the only answer? No. So airlines have to look to go beyond just offering this to the customer. Airlines have to look at achieving operational efficiencies because that's where the payback will come from. Otherwise, this is something which is going to be an additional cost for airlines, as I see it, and that's our hypothesis, without opportunity to make money. So there may be ancillary revenue through CRM, but the bigger opportunity, in our opinion, lies in operational efficiencies, and of course, that entire area of predictive maintenance. So if I share just one example with you, Qatar Airways recently became the first airline to launch the A350, which is the latest Airbus aircraft. Apparently, the A350 has about 400,000 health monitoring parameters that it transmits. Using a combination of analytics, big data, and connectivity, the ability to monitor those parameters could actually save downtime for an aircraft. And that is of value. Because if you can reduce that downtime, Ultimately, the aircraft as an asset makes money when it's flying, not when it's grounded. 